All right, now we're going to take a look at Judith Butler's essay called Performative Acts and Gender Constitution. So what's going on here? Butler is focusing mainly on gender as a performative act. So she says that it's a stylized repetition of acts. Gender is acted out in our body language, clothing, grooming, speech, etc. So what does this mean? It's fluid. It's not a determinate identification. Rather, it's socially situated. It only happens within a social setting. So Butler says it's a constructed identity and a performative accomplishment. So because gender is an act, that means that the ways in which we act gender blurs the lines of what is real. It's only real insofar as it's performed. So what does this entail? Since gender is fluid and isn't an inherent normative identity marker, gender can change both within individuals or within larger societal settings. So for instance, what it means to be a white middle to upper class woman today looks very different from the gender performance of what it was to be a white middle to upper class woman in the 17th century. So her main point or her thesis is that gender identity is actually performed based on our beliefs about gender but is not constitutive of the individual person i.e. the person's gender does not determine the actions and identities of him or her and this makes room for changing the gender norms. You need to make sure that you can delineate sex from gender. So, sex is biological and gender is social or cultural. Now this is specifically for Butler. Some feminists think that this distinction isn't that clear, but we're going to use what Butler is doing here. So then Butler goes in to talk about the body a little bit. She uses phenomenology. Now what is phenomenology? It's a branch of philosophy that focuses on consciousness and embodiment and how we interact with the world through our bodies. So why is Butler using it? The focus is on the body. So the body is a sort of map or drawing or depiction of the social structures around us. So since gender is constructed by bodily acts, we can use phenomenology to see what or why the body reflects the structures. This also means that the ways in which we disrupt normal gendered bodily functions works to disrupt the larger structures. Furthermore, Phenomenology pushes against dualism, at least feminist phenomenologies do. So mind-body dualism is a sense that I am something besides my body. But with embodiment, the separation starts to get hairy. Butler says, the I that is its body is, of necessity, a mode of embodying, and the what that it embodies is possibilities. So this means basically, that I am the subject, verb, and predicate, okay? So, gender may be performative, but it's a really important performance. There are concrete consequences for performing properly or performing wrong. Gender as a performative means that it's constantly evolving and becoming. So you don't just become a man or a woman, but you're constantly becoming a man or a woman. So where does this norm come from? Individuals perform gender based on social norms, but those social norms require people to abide by them. So where does it start? Just like all social reality, the norm is self-regenerating. The individual impacts the structure, which impacts the individual. So this is exactly what phenomenology does through analyzing the body. So it's no wonder feminists like phenomenology, because it's so similar to this sort of feminist phrase, the personal is political, as Butler describes in her essay. But remember, it's not that the individual determines the structure, or vice versa, but rather that they inform and change each other. So Butler goes on to talk a little bit about heteronormativity in gender. Historically speaking, kinship structures dictated a norm of heterosexuality for the sake of spreading familial ties along small communities. This is also where incest taboos come from. So saying that heterosexuality is natural works to solidify it as a norm. And this is where that fallacious claim comes about that the natural is right. So the important point about heterosexuality here is 
I can be heterosexual because that is a larger social marker that my body can per perform. So remember, the body is a map or picture of the larger social climate. Heteronormativity and gender are repetitive acts. This is why the performances can be dubbed norms. So the norms guide our actions, but our performances can in turn inform changes in the norms. So what's the point? By understanding gender as a performative, Judith Butler, A, pulls us away from naturalist conceptions of gender. B, shows us that gender is mostly smoke and mirrors. C, allows us to think about gender performances as doing some radical feminist work. So how can I perform my gender differently that will require people to question their beliefs? And lastly, she frees us from changing our desires according to what we're supposed to do. So that's Butler. Now you're going to go on and read the next reading. And remember to check out the help discussion form if you have any other questions on Judith Butler.